Oh, okay. All right. All right, so I'm Bob Herklotz. Um, as, as you look at the title there, if you got any questions, what that means is my program deals with cybersecurity. Uh, at first, I'll try to cover some background and context of what I'm trying to do in the, in the program. Uh, I'll present some highlights, a lot of them for a specific reason throughout, and uh, no great intent to go too deeply into stuff. Uh, as every time I go over this, I go, oh, it's long. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, next. All right, so the program is... Uh, Brief description. Fund science that will enable Air Force and DOD to dominate cyberspace. Science to develop secure information systems for our warfighters and to deny the enemy such systems. Okay, so hint there is cybersecurity is a team sport. I work with uh, DARPA, IARPA, ARO, ONR, NSA, DHS, NIST, NSF, and uh, asdr &E pretty much tries to keep us all working together. And over the last 12 years I've been a program manager, that's been working pretty good. Or let's say it's developed to where it's working pretty good. Okay. Um, what's the problem? Well, the problem is uh, cybersecurity has kind of been approached in an ad hoc manner in the past. So somebody finds a vulnerability in one of our systems, Hardware, software, networks, human, okay. And uh, next thing we have malware in our system and it's doing something. Uh, <clears throat> first problem is let's detect it. Sometimes it's in there for a long time doing something and we don't know about it. So we detect it. That's hopefully we capture the software because it's pretty smart and likes to disappear. Then we can reverse engineer it. It's usually designed not to let you do that very good. And we finally figure out what it does and what it's been trying to do and try to patch, invent a fix to it and then go patch our systems. Okay, so that's the thing. So we, after months, we get to the point where we got this patch, we try to deploy our patch. First one to buy a patch is the attacker. Of course, in the interim, it's pretty much insecure, right? We haven't done anything yet to make it more secure. And uh, he buys a patch. He, he's very agile, and he goes, whoa, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> he laughs a little bit, and he has a workaround to another vulnerability or the same one a different way. And, you know, it's an asymmetry that we have that's, that's part of we're trying to defend a huge system. And uh, uh, everywhere. So, so that's the problem. So a few years ago, uh, equivalent of the science board, but for the uh, Intel guys, kind of said is, you know, we're tired of this attack, patch, attack, and we keep losing, it doesn't seem to get any better, and those guys that care about return on investment keep saying, you spent all this money and it's not any better, or it doesn't appear to be any better. Uh, we'll talk about metrics later about whether it appears or what that means, if you can even measure it. And, um, and so, uh, they said is, isn't there some more scientific basis to the security? And part of the problem is we did, did some studies, and in the same study, they come back and define cybersecurity three different ways in the same piece of paper. So nobody had a formal definition of what they mean by security to begin with. And so, uh, so it was decided we had a workshop, uh, invited a bunch of academics and other people to come in and brief on this. About out of 40 people, there was probably 10 that kind of got the idea. We want something deeper than, yes, I figured out how to defend against the attack of the day, you know, in what I thought was fast fashion. Uh, so since then, uh, between myself and uh, NSA, we've probably funded a few of those people. We decided we should do a, a MURI, put a bunch of money on it. I'd already put some money on it. And, uh, and so, uh, we've decided to go deeply into the, trying to develop a science of security. Okay. So that's kind of the problem. What we would really like the science of security to do is tell us how to uh, uh, 
build an inherently secure system, a perfectly secure system. Okay? You've got to define security. You liked all those rules. Ah. So let's say we're going to, and we are, spending a lot of money, or starting to spend a lot of money to do that. Comes back to that problem again is, well, even if I knew how to do it, you know, these systems we're talking about are huge, millions and millions, maybe billions of lines of code when you link at all the systems of systems together, right? And uh, really, are we good, that good even if we knew how to build it perfectly, that we can actually build it perfectly, that we haven't left some errors in there? Not only that, you know, they aren't static systems, they're dynamic systems. So we're always changing them anyway. Can we continue this over the lifetime? and keeping them up to speed. And even when, if we know what we need to change to make it secure, uh, can we execute that, right? Uh, so we got sheer size, we got it's huge and hard to keep up. Uh, we got the asymmetry I talked about already of the attacker. He's much more agile than the federal government and its ability to acquire something and actually get it out there. So the problem is not only do we need to know how to build something perfectly secure, but we need to know kind of a backup strategy of what to do, considering that most of the time we're going to be working on an insecure system anyway. And how do we continue to operate and do what we need to do until we invent the science of security and until, uh, you know, hopefully the systems will get better when we do, or if we do, and, uh, but there will still be vulnerabilities there. So we spent quite a bit of the last year working with DOD, uh, uh, building up their latest strategy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it what it is, the latest buzzwords of cybersecurity. And they came up with, well, we need resilient systems, I think. Somebody asked about resiliency. And that means you have a system that uh, is not secure or possibly not secure, and how do I still execute the mission on that? Uh, agility. Well, you know, the attacker has to find uh, a vulnerability in your system and attack that. If you actually move things around, like artificial diversity, or maybe IP hopping, or a whole bunch of other techniques, can you move the target he's after, okay, faster than he can come up with the latest attack and slow him down? And then, of course, uh, what are we really defending? We're not defending the whole network just because we love our whole network of all these systems. We really want to defend the important mission that we're executing, probably only on some portion of that network, okay? So all we need to do is, for the time that mission is important, defend some portion of the network securely, okay? So we can make a smaller target, okay? We can move around and make it hard for him to attack. We can try to fight through uh, the attacks that are already ongoing or have been successful. So that's kind of the backup strategy until we can invent, uh, learn how to, and build purely secure systems. So that's the big background. That's kind of the latest strategy. And like I kind of hinted, a lot of these terms have come up again. And you'll see as we've been thinking about these things for a long time, just change the words every now and then. Okay, next. All right, so what am I doing specifically in my program? Because that's a lot of stuff. It's a team sport. So I'm, I was asked by DOD to, to lead writing this MURI for the science of security. So that's the main, I'm, I'm moving most of my program into the, the, the um, formally developing it. Okay, and we have this other little problem of covert channels. Okay, that aren't really exactly part of the system I planned, but are kind of back doors. So we'd like to understand them. And then, of course, down to the, what are we really trying to defend is that mission. How do we execute the mission on insecure components? Okay. So I'm going to talk about these three main thrusts, and, and now we're going to go into some more specifically onto, into some programs, and I'll try to talk about them in relation to those thrusts. Next. So, <clears throat> the science of cybersecurity. 
what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to develop some laws of security, okay? Laws are theories that are predictive. You know, we like to analyze an artifact system, that's what that is, or subsystem, and predict its properties, you know, what it does, and how well does it do it, okay? So we can understand it in relation to maybe a lot of properties, security being one of them, okay? Synthesis, if we got a bunch of subcomponents that we put together or systems of systems, and we did the first part and we understand how they work, it would be real nice if we don't have to start over again because we have this big dynamical system that's always changing and so that what we know already, we can, under, we can analyze and quickly understand what the, the uh, composed system, what its properties are. Next. So, let's go, the laws about what in more detail. So, if you consider Yeah, my notes, and it, I guarantee you it'll be too long if I don't use my notes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the the uh, kind of the features of a cyber system, okay, that we're interested in with respect to security. Let's say this is our domain, the features of our domain, and they're kind of characterize one way to look at it is by classes of policies. Talking about security policies, okay? Classes of attacks, how, how one could attack, and classes of different defenses I have. So it would be real nice to be able to uh, understand what defense class D enforces policy P despite attacks from class A in the system I'm looking at today, okay? And that way, I could compare architectures or systems and, and know if I build it this way, it's, you know, let's say it's uh, secure against all the classes I know or most of the classes I know uh, uh, <clears throat> if I use certain policies. And, uh, and if I'm dynamic and I change things, I can understand where I'm switching, if I could understand that. Okay, next. All right, so we started a MURI on the science of security. These are the people. This includes most of the people who, since that first workshop, were actually interested in going deeper. Lead is John Mitchell. I think it's a pretty good group from Stanford, Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, Cornell, UPenn. Pretty much the elite. Next. Okay, so what are these guys doing? Uh, and this, by the way, this MURI just started, supposed to start in July. Kickoff was at the end of September. They actually got money about December. Don't ask me about that. Okay, so what are they doing? They want to advance the science base for trustworthiness, another term for security, cybersecurity, by developing concepts, relationships, laws with predictive value, okay? And first part, they're going to look at modeling, okay? And this is kind of deeply understanding those relationships that I was just talking about. And composition, we talked about, I understand them for the parts and I start putting them together and build. Do I have to do it all over again, or can I uh, uh, understand what the final result will be with the analysis I already did? And then this last one is security measurement, okay, which you heard a lot about measurement already in the first talk. Uh, goals include determining relative strength of defenses, et cetera. This is metrics. This is a thing that everybody's beaten us over the head for years. Everybody's tried to have programs in. and. Uh, in fact, that was a study where they couldn't define security but three different ways on what a metric was. And I'm going to say, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and what we're starting there to give you the flavor of, we're trying to start from basics, from first principles and our work our way up to understand this uh, science of cybersecurity. <coughs> so in my opinion, metrics have kind of been from the top down. Somebody has an idea 
and they come up with some number somewhere. And then you